Hey guys, welcome to section 8.5 using the distributive property part one. And in this section, we're going to be introduced to our new favorite F word, and that F word is factoring. And factoring is to express a polynomial as a product of monomials and polynomials. So basically, factoring is going backwards for multiplying. So in reality, we're going to take our answers from us multiplying and we're going to go in reverse. So let's take a peek of what that looks like. So we're going to start here with number one. When we factor, the very first thing that we want to do is look at our numbers. So we look at both numbers. What can we divide out? What can we take out of both of these numbers, 27 and 18? Well, I look at 27 and 18, and I know that they both divide by 9. So when I factor out, I factor out that 9 by writing it on the side. And now before I move to anything else, what else can I take out? Well, how about a Y? How about a Y I'm dividing out from both of them? So I put a 9Y on the side, and now in parentheses, I'm going to put what is... I have left so I have 27 divided by 9 is 3 and then y squared divided by y remember you subtract exponents when you divide variables so it's gonna be 3y and then moving to 18 18 divided by 9 is plus 2 and then y divided by y is just 1 so I'm not gonna write that down and so now we factored it to be 9y times the quantity 3y plus 2 Again, let's look at number two. The very first thing we have to do is look at our numbers. We have 15 and 25. What goes into both of those numbers? It is five. And now we look at our letters. What goes into an X and an X squared? That is X, right? So now I am dividing out, essentially I'm dividing out a five X here and I'm dividing out a five X here. So now I'm going to put in the parentheses what I have left. So start with your numbers. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And then you have x divided by x, which is 1, so I'm not going to write that down. Then it's going to be plus. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And x squared divided by x is just 1x. And so now this is factored, right? This is your answer to the factors of this guy. Let's try a couple more. The very first thing you always want to do when you factor is to look at your numbers and see what can you take out of just your numbers. Well, here I have a 4, 8, and a 2. What can I take out of all those numbers? I hope you realize that you can take out a 2. So I write my 2 down. Then you go to a letters. I have a squared, a, and a, so I know I can take out a, a. Then going to b, how many b's can I take out? I have one in each, so I'm going to take out one b. Now in parentheses, I'm going to put down everything that I have left. I'm going to divide this out of every single problem. So I go negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Now a squared divided by a is just 1a left. b divided by b is 1, so I'm not going to write that down. Now I'm going to move on to this guy. I have negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. I have a divided by a, which is 1, so I'm not going to put that down. And then b squared divided by b, which is just b. Then I'm moving on to this guy. Well, I have 2 divided by 2, which is 1, not going to put that down, a divided by a, which is 1, and b divided by b, which is 1. So since everything is 1, since I divided out everything and it turned into 1, I'm going to put that down, right? So I know that I have one extra term in here, right? So again, since everything I divided out turned into 1, we do need to put that 1 down. And let's try another one with 4. One more time. Again, you need to look at your numbers first. What can you take out of a 12, a 24, and a 30? Well, I know that I can take out a 6 from all those numbers. Now we move on to our variables. We have an x and an x and an x squared. Well, the most x's I can take out is just 1x. 
And how about a y? Well, here's a y, a y squared, and a y to the fourth. Well, I can't take out a y to the fourth because I don't have four y's here. I can only take out a y. So I set it down. Now, the next thing we are going to do is divide out that 6xy from every single term. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 12 divided by 6, which is 2. x divided by x, which is 1, so I'm not going to put that down. And y divided by y, which is also 1. So I'm just going to leave it 2. You could have went 2 times 1 times 1, but that's still going to be 2, right? So I'm not going to show that. So now, moving on to the next term. 24 divided by 6 is going to be a plus 4. x divided by x is 1, so I'm not going to put that down. y squared divided by y is y. We have one y left over. And then finally, we have negative 30 x squared y to the fourth. Negative 30 divided by 6 is negative 5 x squared divided by x is just 1x because we're subtracting those exponents. And then y to the fourth minus 1y is y to the third. And this is the factored form of number four. If you would multiply this together, you would come up with this. So if you want to double check, multiply your answer together and you would come up with what you started with. Now, let's try two more examples. Number five. Again, the very first thing we have to do is to see if we can divide out uh, anything from our number. So I look at a four and an eight. Well, I'm thinking four right now. Well, I get to a three. Well, I can't take anything out of there. Okay, well, let's move on to our letters. Can we take anything out of the letters? Well, I have a Q and an R there. I have an R, so I'm thinking R right now. And I have a Q, but I have no R. So I can't take out a Q or an R out of these guys. But now here's a trick. Whenever you have four terms and you can't take out anything, see if you can group these guys together where you can factor something out. So what if I do this with it? Can I factor out something here? Well, I can. I can take a four out. What else can I take out? I can take out a r. So now I'm going to be left with four divided by four is one. Uh, r divided by r is one. But did I take out that q? No, not yet. So I bring it down. How about here? Eight divided by four is plus two. r divided by r is one. Not going to put it down. Now I'm moving on to the next set. What can I take out of both of these? Hopefully you saw that it's a plus 3, so I'm going to bring that plus 3 down. So 3q divided by 3 is just q, and 6 divided by 3 is just 2. Now, here's the tricky part. Again, I factored it, but I'm not quite done, because look at q plus 2 and this q plus 2. Are they both factors? in different products they are a factor here and a here so I'm going to take it out I'm going to take out that q plus 2 and put it right there and now I took out that q plus 2 and put it here what do I have left from my red uh, my red product I have that for four R left what do I have from that blue product that I didn't use. I have the 3 left, so I put it down here. And so now your final factors are right here. The quantity of Q plus 2 times the quantity R, 4R plus 3. Let's try another one. Number 6. Again, the very first thing we want to look at. Can we take out anything from all these terms? Well, 2, okay. There's no 2 here, so how about my x's? Can I take out an x of, out of every single one? Oh, I can take out x's so far, but then I get to this y. Now I have no x's to take out. I can't take out a y. So what can we do? Again, let's try to group the like terms together. So what if I go here, 
and now I'm going to include this minus sign with it. I would always include the minus sign with your numbers and just throw a plus sign in between the uh, parentheses. So what can I take out of the red parentheses? Well, I can take out a X from both of them. So I'm going to make it X. And then what's left? I have 2Y plus, and then 7X divided by X is 7. And now what can you take out of the blue parentheses? Well, I know that I have two minus signs, so I'm going to take out that minus sign because you don't want minus signs sitting in your parentheses, so I'm going to take out a negative 1, and that leaves me with negative 2y divided by negative 1 is 2y, negative 7 divided by negative 1 is a plus 7, so I take it out. Now do I have any like terms? Well, if I take a peek, I have... 2y plus 7 and 2y plus 7. Those are the same exact things, right? And it's an actual term. So I'm going to take out that 2y plus 7 and put it right there. Now since I took that out of both terms, I still have a x left and a negative 1 left that I need to write down. So I'm going to go x minus 1 and put that in the other parentheses. And so now I just factored 2xy plus 7x minus 2y minus 7. And that does it for the first part of 8.5 using the distributive property. Good day.